So this is a, um, a LaTeX document right here. Uh, it's a PDF. It, it, it uh, is something that um, I created using LaTeX uh, for the presentation. So um, LaTeX is a, a tool that works well for a lot of different mediums and really has a lot of nice uh, features added to it. <clears throat> So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what LaTeX is first and then a brief history because it's super fascinating. A lot of people uh, gloss over that. I, I had no idea uh, when I started learning LaTeX um, that it was actually a real computer science uh, challenge and, um, and uh, uh, art, form of art. And then some uh, syntax basics uh, for LaTeX. We can just kind of delve into whatever you're interested in after that. Um, but LaTeX basically is a document preparation system. Uh, so it's, it's designed to create documents. Um, and uh, it's good for writing um, like you would write a Word document or, or a PowerPoint presentation. Um, but instead of um, messing around with um, the formatting and uh, what it looks like uh, with the content, you can just write the content and then um, uh, compile it to a document that has formatting in it. So um, most commonly, we compile our our documents to PDFs. Um, and so it's a programming language for writing papers and all kinds of other stuff. And so you've got source code uh, where you write the stuff and you compile it to um, something written. Um, so this is used by um, the academic community at large. So anybody who's doing research um, or publishing papers, uh, but it's also used for authors who are uh, writing uh, books, um, obviously textbooks. Um, it's used for uh, presentations. Um, and it really has um, a lot of powerful capabilities um, that we'll talk about the benefits of in just a minute. Um, and then like HTML, uh, it's a markup language. Uh, so you're able to um, add markup to the document um, to make things bold or emphasized or add images, et cetera. Um, it's obviously a completely different format than HTML, um, but kind of relies on that same concept. It's a markup uh, setup. And um, yeah, and it's free and open source. It's been around for a while. Um, so the benefits, why use LaTeX? So um, there's a separation from the content and the formatting. And so we can use templates and we can have uh, our, our content automatically formatted. But when we're writing, uh, we can just focus on what we're trying to say. Um, and this is really powerful. You don't have to think about like, oh, now my margins are messed up or, um, you know, there's a, 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 an image that keeps bumping to the next page. Uh, that's all fixed for you. Um, it's pretty, pretty nice in how it's automated. Um, there, it's super high quality topography. So um, the guy who created it, which we'll talk a little bit about in uh, the, the next part, um, actually spent a, a super long time trying to make it look as, uh, you know, skillfully uh, correct as possible um, and uh, really, really like focused in on typography. Um, so it looks really sharp. Um, and uh, you can easily type in things that would be hard to find the symbols for um, using uh, Word or something else. Um, so if you just want to, uh, you know, for example, type the sum symbol uh, or alpha or something, you can just type the little command for that and it shows right up. Um, and all the commands are pretty uh, uh, easy to understand, uh, pretty simple to follow. Um, so it is in that respect like a programming language. Um, and it's uh, endlessly customizable. Um, so you can uh, really tweak every single component of the document. And anything that happens, you can see why it happened. Um, so if you get into uh, the style end of it, you can, you can say, oh, this is why you know, my images are all showing up at the top, um, or I can change it. Um, you never have this situation. I have this all the time in Word where it's like, okay, there's this new line that I can't delete for some reason. It's there, um, oh. but I can't delete it. Or there's a second page with nothing on it. And, um, you know, for some reason it's stuck there. Um, or, or, or I, um, you know, I got a file from, I sent a file to somebody, they modified it, sent it back to me. And now um, the, the, the pages have all these extra spaces in it. And I can't find where in the settings that is. Um, there's nothing hidden in, in LaTeX. Um, so you can easily see all the syntax. Um, so the other thing is it's very stable. Um, it's been around for a long time um, and it's backwards compatible, free and open source. Um, it works on all platforms. Uh, so the open source community has done a great job of, of making it work well for everything. Um, and uh, yeah, again, you're, you're, you're working in plain source. Uh, so you're writing some source code. You can see exactly what's going on. Um, and um, there's no, no potential for like viruses or, you know, um, we've heard about, um, 
macros being hidden in Word documents or, or PowerPoint or, or things like that, where um, they have to kind of disable features or say, are you sure you want to do this? Or this document has been downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to edit it? Because uh, there's potential for um, there being issues there um, with uh, viruses, uh, malicious macros being inserted. Um, and that's not really pos possible with uh, LaTeX source code because um, you really can, you're really seeing everything that, that's going to be compiled in. Um, it also works great with version control. Uh, so um, I am a big fan of using version control like Git uh, for anything that's important. Uh, so, um, you know, it's since it's a plain text format, um, it's much easier to track changes of what happened on certain lines. Um, sure, you can commit a Word document to uh, GitHub. Um, but if you change a line and you look at the diff on GitHub, it's, it's nonsensical, right? You can't say, oh, that word was added because, you know, um, a Word document is compressed and it's got this XML kind of hidden hierarchy in it. Um, and so it's just impossible to tell what changed when you're comparing the diffs between two versions of a Word document and many other documents. But since we're just dealing with plain source text, we can easily say on this line, you know, this was modified or so forth. And because it's source code, uh, we can split our document source into multiple files. For example, uh, multiple, if you have, you could have one file for each section of a document and uh, then um, include that all and compile it all to one final, a single document uh, that gets output. Um, so you're able to just, uh, you know, you could, uh, for instance, have a group project and you say, you work on section one, you work on section two. Uh, well, um, people can upload their submissions. If they only modify those separate files, uh, then it automatically gets merged in easily uh, to the final document that contains both. Um, and so that's really, really cool too. And I, I could just keep talking about uh, different ways uh, LaTeX is um, awesome. And as you kind of play around with it, you'll discover uh, different features that it has that you might uh, benefit from. Um, if you look at this presentation, um, you can see uh, at the top, I've got um, the, the three categories that I'm talking about. So we're in the LaTeX overview in the very top left, and this is the third slide. So that's why that, that th uh, three is uh, filled in. And when we go to the next slide here, um, you can see it bumps over to the, the next, the fourth circle filled in. And this is the last circle for um, this overview. And then um, you can see after that, it bumps to uh, the next circle. That's all done automatically with a style template um, for me. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. It's automatically generated based on the content I've created. Um, so it, it really is nice um, in that respect. And everything just kind of matches because uh, I'm using that. Um, so some challenges. Uh, the learning curve for LaTeX can be kind of steep. Uh, you can start out really simple. It's really easy to write a paper with a title and paragraphs. And uh, then, you know, it's just a little bit more work to add some pictures or formatting. But you can really get into the weeds of tweaking it. And that's what I tend to do. Um, I'm like, oh, I want to just move this over a little bit. Or, um, you know, I wonder if I could, you know, make these uh, section headers a little bigger and, you know, uh, um, that there's a, a, you can definitely go down a rot rabbit hole, um, but it's all very well documented. There's so many resources. I'm going to show you a few in a minute um, that are really helpful to leverage. Um, and then the other issue is it actually is a programming language. So um, you can actually write for loops and uh, conditionals for different things to happen uh, as well as markup. And uh, so therefore there are syntax errors. So um, you can, uh, you you can write something and you're, document might not compile uh, and then you get an error message and then you have to interpret the error message just like nice. uh, yeah just like you're working <laughs> with c plus plus or something um and so that can be um a little tricky to figure out um i definitely compile my documents like uh, every few lines i write um or if i if i do if i make any uh, different change i just compile it again uh so i can see um what uh, uh what happened and if there is an error i know it's right there um, and a lot of uh, document systems uh, will automatically, every time you hit save, compile it for you. Um, and Overleaf does that very well. <laughs> um, so let's, let me just talk about a brief history because this is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so uh, Donald Knuth uh, authored The Art of Programming. Uh, and you may have seen these books on uh, Dr. West's bookshelf. Um, I'd love to get a copy, um, but they're like, uh, you know, uh, $160 for the set or something. Uh, haven't, haven't, uh, spent it, but it's an amazing, um, uh, set of volumes of, uh, really the science in computer science and kind of thinking about, um, what, what computer programming is, how to design algorithms. Well, uh, it's super fascinating. Um, and he's still around and he's still writing. Um, so you can see volumes one through three and then four a, 
Uh, so he's still working on 4B, <laughs> the 4B volume. Uh, he divided up into two parts. <laughs> yeah, he, he, uh, he was just like, this volume is taking too long to write. I better get what I have out. Uh, so made a 4A. <laughs> um, but you can see on the left here, so 1968, he made his first edition of the, of the first volume. And it was printed on a mechanical printer. Uh, so uh, uh, mechanical uh, printing press, meaning like you have some ink uh, that's hot and it's pressed onto the paper, you know, uh, kind of mm -hmm. like old, really old fashioned style, 1940s type technology that they were still using. Um, and then 1976, the second edition came out. Uh, so again, this is 11 years later um, <laughs> between editions. Uh, so it's been like, his life work, this, that he keeps on doing it. Um, if you go to the Wikipedia page for the art of programming, uh, you can see kind of uh, what's, what's going to be in, in 4B and uh, the estimated time for it to finish. And it's like, he'll be like 120 or something <laughs> uh, before, before nice. you know, based on his progress. Uh, but uh, it's really amazing, amazing material. Um, and so he revised a ton of the stuff in the first uh, volume, in the first edition, the only volume at the time. And uh, by that time, printing technology had changed and you couldn't do the mechanical printing. And so they had uh, basically this uh, photo uh, type setting where you have uh, light that shines through like a negative and based on um, that on the, it gets, uh, you know, uh, the opposite of magnified, you know, so it doesn't go through a magnifying glass, it becomes smaller instead of bigger and uh, shines on the piece of paper. And that indicates, you know, um, how dark the, the things get where the light shines. Um, and, and, and that was the printing process, um, you know, again, before computers were doing uh, publishing. And uh, he just was so upset with how that looked compared to the first edition. He thought the first edition was so much better and he spent 11 years revising it to make it better. Um, and it just looked terrible and he was very embarrassed by that. Um, and so he was supposed to go on sabbatical and uh, uh, he was going to learn Spanish in, in, in South America. Um, and instead, he canceled that trip and decided to focus on making uh, tech, what became uh, tech. And uh, he, uh, he worked on that for a year. He got some other help um, and uh, uh, kind of had an initial setup. And, um, you know, it was widely used even before it was officially first released. Uh, I shouldn't say widely used. It was, it was, it was in use. Um, and... Uh, and then in 1989, Tech was released, um, which is the precursor to LaTeX. Um, and so again, you can see um, more than more than a decade after uh, he was working on that. And he spent a long time thinking about font systems and how to arrange fonts and how to um, lay them out in the most uh, aesthetically pleasing way and also the most readable way, uh, the most legible way. Readability and legibility are a little bit different. Um, and, uh, and, and thinking about different styles, thinking about mathematical formulas, obviously that's very big in, um, computer science and, um, and, uh, he, uh, didn't have, you know, the, the technology we have today. And so a lot of what he was doing is kind of looking at the old mechanical fonts that were so much superior in his mind and, uh, figuring out, you know, what the font designers were thinking, you know, and applying mathematical formulas to the curves and shapes of the letters and stuff. Um, uh, so it was really impressive, um, kind of uh, that progress. And he created uh, this uh, computer based uh, typesetting system uh, that then the rest of the volumes of his textbook were published in or his it's not a textbook, uh, his his art of computer programming. Um, and, uh, and it's been used by authors and all kinds of other people since. Now, um, in 1984, so partway through that, um, uh, Leslie Lamport uh, basically added a bunch of macros to tech um, and called it LaTeX. Um, and uh, this separated very cleanly uh, the uh, content from the formatting. Um, and so he, he really made that split to make it a lot simpler. He also made it a lot easier to write mathematical formulas. Um, so tech had the ability to do it in very precise, precise ways, uh, but it was a little bit uh, kind of hard to do. Um, you had to like have a lot of background knowledge uh, to, or, or understanding of the system to make it work well. Um, and so right now we're under LaTeX 2E, uh, which is formatted like, like you can see there. It was released in 1994. And it, it's not to say that you know, it hasn't changed since 1994. There's been uh, continuous uh, development and updates, uh, but no uh, major features have changed since then. Uh, there is a LaTeX 3 that's going to be pretty awesome whenever it gets released, but it's again on the slow track like everything else in the history of LaTeX. Um, and it's oh. going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be really cool. It's been worked on since the, the, the 1990s, um, but it's going to make things even easier to um, jump on board with. So, uh, you know, I mentioned there's a little bit of a um, 
learning curve uh, to learn LaTeX. That should be a lot easier with LaTeX 3. Um, and you can look at the GitHub page and see, you know, kind of where they're at in the development. You can contribute to it uh, if you want. Um, and uh, also, there's tons of packages, uh, which are, you know, like um, libraries that you can include with your LaTeX code, just like any other programming language. Um, and those are all very uh, much under active development um, to add additional features or uh, built-in formatting uh, so you don't have to write the code it's there for you um, so yeah really really cool um, addition to tech to make it uh, much more approachable not just uh, amazingly beautiful and precise so um, this part here of the presentation um, I just kind of I'm going to give you the brief highlights and then we're going to just jump into the code and and do it ourselves um, but uh, here's the basic setup for a, um, a document the minimal thing you need um, and so you can see anything that starts with a backslash is a uh, markup command and uh, the contents of the type of command is in curly braces um, so if you have anything that starts with a, a backslash for example backslash document class um, that's setting what type of class, what, what type of document this is. And so article is one common example of that. There's a few, or there's a lot of other standard ones, um, maybe 10 uh, that, that are commonly used. Um, and then there's a begin document, and then you can just type your text there. And then whenever you're done, you need the end document um, uh, uh, markup. And uh, paragraphs are just separated by a blank space. Um, and so it's pretty simple in that regard. Um, the trick uh, kind of goes in when you want to uh, do more than just the basics. Um, so we'll start out with that when we, uh, when we write our own uh, LaTeX document. Uh, but here's just a little bit more that we can do. So we can add some more markup. Um, you can see you, there's a special uh, thing for the title, a special thing for the author, um, a special thing for the date on line six there. Um, and um, there's even a command for today. So uh, every time we compile this, it'll say today's date if we use that um, command. And then we've got the begin document again. And then I just added the make title command there. So slash make title on line eight. And you can see um, that what that would do is add um, information that you've included in the, the preamble before the document started there in a nice formatted way. Um, and you can do other things with the title as well. Um, and then end document. Um, so um, that's kind of uh, the really, really basic basics. Now, um, here's some resources that we'll leverage um, tonight and, and regularly. And actually, I'll send you um, on the Discord um, a link to uh, this bottom one here. So this is, uh, this is the source code for this presentation. Um, and um, it would be helpful for you to be able to have that. And then you can just pull up the PDF and look at the other links. Let me find my tab with Discord in it. And this is Overleaf over here on the right. I don't know what I did with it. I've got too many tabs open. If you want to post it in Smalltalk, and then you could post it in the presentation resources to have it available for longer. Um, All right, where's that? It's a little bit more down on the list. Let's see. Is it present? I might not have presentation resources. That'd be a bummer. Oh, I see it. It's all the way at the bottom for me. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so if you go to that, uh, um, GitHub page. Let me. Um, you can go to releases here. Um, the release. Sorry, I might have done that too quickly. The release tab, um, and uh, under uh, this presentation release, the the initial release here, um, there should be um, some assets, and one of them is main.pdf. That's that's the presentation file. Um, so that's the compiled file. Um, in, in, in here, actual is the source code. So uh, main.tex for LaTeX or tech um, is uh, the source code for um, 
the file. And uh, before we jump into all that, I'll, I just want to start with something a little more basic, but uh, definitely pull up the PDF because uh, that, those links at the end of the presentation are really helpful. Um, this here, this wiki book, um, like has everything. Uh, I, I usually just Google search, you know, how to do this in LaTeX. And um, uh, the best answers are always from here. <laughs> um, and they have an answer for pretty much everything. Uh, so we'll, we'll reference that for sure uh, today. And then um, the CTRAN um, is a, um, it's a distri uh, it distributes uh, packages for uh, different languages, but uh, it has all the LaTeX uh, packages in there. And so if you, if you Google search for a particular ability, you'll probably get uh, use this package and then um, it'll refer to uh, CTRAN. Um, I assume that's CTAN. I, I don't know how you pronounce that. CTAN. I don't even know what it stands for. Um, but I'd say CTAN. <laughs> okay. Catan. 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 Settlers of Catan. Um, <laughs> And, a little and, different. Yeah. And then here uh, is a link since we're in ACM. Uh, here's a link to ACM's LaTeX template uh, for like if you want to uh, do a publication uh, hmm. in, in one of the um, conferences or journals that, that ACM has, uh, they have a LaTeX template for that. Um, but um, on your computer, um, I just want to point out if you have LaTeX installed, you can just use the command line um, to compile LaTeX. Now, this is the most basic way, and I, I never do it. Um, but I, you can see here, I've got um, in this file here, I've got this demo.tex file. It's got some LaTeX code in it. Um, and I can just do PDF LaTeX. Uh, PDF because I want to I want to compile a PDF. There's, there's uh, compilers for other things, but most commonly, uh, we use LaTeX. And, um, and then I can do uh, demo.tex. Um, and it'll compile and all this here is output um, from my compiler. Um, if I had error message, they'd show up here, uh, but you can see it's, it's doing a, a memoir uh, document class uh, and uh, I can configure it as other things and it's import, importing some styles and stuff. Um, now, if I, if I show you what's in this folder now, um, you can see now there's an aux file, a log file. So this is like the compiling log. It's not only in the terminal, they also write it to a file, which is nice. Oh, that's it's, nice. Yeah, and this PDF, and so this PDF is what I just compiled. It compiled to a PDF. Um, and so I can open that um, in whatever my, my PDF viewer is. Um, Sumatra PDF um, demo.pdf. Oh, no. S-U-B-M-A? I I think you meant Oh, yeah, S -S yeah. Sum Sumatra. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, here's, here's the document. Um, obviously, just a silly demo document. Um, uh, but let's let's talk about how to make something uh, before I show you show you that. But this compiling is simple, I guess, uh, from the command line. Um, now, most most of the time, we use an editor like an IDE that'll just build it for us. Um, and Overleaf is a nice online one that I um, have never used until uh, today. <laughs> so, um, uh, Dr. West uses it for one of our data structures assignments. So we there oh. we go. It's been vetted. <laughs> yeah, good deal. <laughs> Um, Dr. Babatunde uses LaTeX a lot. I think all his syllabi are in LaTeX. Um, so if you ever seen like his, his syllabi that have, um, like, you know, circles around the, or squares around all the links and stuff, um, that's all, uh, output from LaTeX. Um, and, uh, um, obviously, um, the rest of us use LaTeX as well. Um, I don't know how I would have finished my dissertation without LaTeX. Um, but anyways, if, if you have uh, your computer open and you've installed LaTeX some way, um, or you, you've, um, you've created an account for, with Overleaf, by the way, um, if you, um, let me log out real quick. Um, if, you, if you just register here, um, you can just enter your email and password and, and register, and uh, then you're in. So it's pretty simple um, to set up a, um, an Overleaf account, um, and it's free. Uh, they charge you if they want if you uh, want to automatically integrate with like GitHub, um, so your your stuff automatically gets committed and pushed or or whatever. Or if you want to have multiple users logging into the same account, um, mm -hmm. so if you're all editing a, a paper, it might be really convenient to just uh, go to the same Overleaf account. Um, I uh, actually uh, don't want to register, but I log in with my Orchid. Um, using a password manager now, so I'm super secure. 
all my passwords are slowly becoming different. Um, and you could just go to new project here um, and we could just do a blank pot project. But um, if you're curious, uh, all these templates are just user uh, built. So um, uh, from Overleaf community. So like uh, there's a, a, a one for resume uh, templates. So if you click on that, you can see here's all the sharp templates that people have made to, uh, to make a resume in LaTeX. Um, and you can just pick one of these and then add your own stuff to it. Um, so um, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with that. Um, in LaTeX as well. But we'll start out for now with just a blank blank project, um, which yeah, maybe I'll call, I'll call demo. And uh, it kind of fills in a lot of the stuff uh, for you initially. Um, but uh, can everyone see this? Do I need to Let's see. zoom in? Yeah, zooming in a little bit would help. So on the left here is the, the document and on the right here is what, what it's gonna output. Um, and uh, the PDF, and I can actually download this PDF straight to a PDF. Um, so um, here's the title. Um, so this is, you know, we can call this whatever um, um, presentation demo or whatever. Um, we can actually uh, give a name here. I like to do my full name, it seems more professional. Um, today's the eighth, right? Um, yes. And so now if I save it, I, I, you can hit control S or, or actually go to the save button. It'll compile over here. And now you can see this information shows up here on the, on the right hand side. Um, and uh, it's got presentation demo and whatnot. I wonder if I can zoom in just, oh yeah, here. Can I zoom in over here? I guess not. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so that's, this is the, the document it's producing. Um, and then uh, here I've got make title. So it, this, um, this is the preamble here. Everything before begin document uh, doesn't show up. So it's just kind of like setting styles or, or meta information, uh, including packages. Um, and so everything before that um, is just, um, just stuff for us to kind of describe what's going to happen. Um, and then here inside the begin document, end document is where um, all the information lives. And so um, you can see, um, you know, if I type hello world, um, this will come up after uh, one introduction here when I save it. Hello world shows up there. Um, and um, not, not too difficult, right? So you could, you could type a, uh, a very long uh, paragraph of something over here uh, and, uh, have that show up. What I'm going to do, because I'm not, not very inspired, um, <laughs> is uh, I'm going to include another package that makes up fake text. Um, so uh, here is a, a package. Um, so this is, says use package. Um, and then um, basically what this package does is it lets us put in weird symbols that aren't ASCII. Uh, so like emojis or, um, you know, um, uh, non-English standard letters, stuff with tildes and, and whatnot. Um, and it'll automatically convert that uh, to the LaTeX version. Um, by default, uh, LaTeX only requires you to uh, have what you can type on the keyboard. Um, and so we, we probably won't use this package uh, right now, but it's nice if you're copying and pasting stuff into your LaTeX document to get it to show up properly. Um, but um, I can just get rid of that right now. We're not using it, um, but we will use another package. Um, so there is a package called um, Lipsum. Uh, you you um, may know about uh, Lipsum, uh, the fake programming, or not fake, the fake language. Um, so if you like look at fonts and stuff, oftentimes, or, or, or templates for websites or stuff, they have this uh, thing that always starts with Lipsum Dorum or, or something like that. And uh, it's just like uh, something that looks like a real language. Um, it looks pretty believable, like it has the flow and shape of a real language, but all the words are totally made up. <laughs> um, and uh, so it's nice because uh, we can use this package to just generate made up text. Um, so I might here have a new paragraph, um, Lipsum, and uh, I'll just do one dash one. This just basically says uh, include a, uh, you know, one paragraph here, uh, one to one, uh, one, one paragraph. I guess that'd be the simplest way to say it. Um, so now you can see here, uh, it says uh, lorem ipsum dole sit, you know, it, it kind of looks like Latin, um, but it's not actually saying anything real. It's just, uh, just a made up paragraph. 
Um, so you actually wouldn't do that in a real paper. Um, and I could say, you know, actually I want um, maybe one to five paragraphs to be generated um, somewhat randomly. And so we can see here now we've got one, two, three, four. Oh, it actually generated five paragraphs um, kind of there. Um, and, and, and so that just gives us some text for this fake document that we're writing. But you can imagine you're writing an ethics paper or something um, here as well. Um, now, um, what, what I might want to show you that is that there's a, a lot of different um, uh, document styles that we can pull from. So this is article. Um, that's one of them. Uh, oh, also here uh, in the document class. Uh, so any, uh, I should mention this in general, uh, since you guys are programmers. Um, the slash, right, starts a command. And then this is the name of the command, right? And then this is kind of um, what the, um, the specific command what we're starting or ending is. Um, so for example, um, here, begin, what are we beginning? We're beginning the document. And then here, end, we're ending the document. So it's kind of like the uh, specializer. Um, uh, and then we can also add parameters to these. Um, and you do that with square brackets. Um, and so uh, inside the square brackets here, for any function, I can uh, add specific parameters that it would, it would allow. Now the document class allows us to specify uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, for example, we can say uh, we want, um, I don't know, 12 point font. So 12 point is um, the example for that. Oops, I got a compiler error, syntax error. Um, what'd I do? I'm gonna just undo for a moment. Oh, I, I deleted the O in document, whoops. Um, yeah, that's better. Um, okay, so like I said, there's syntax errors possibility. Um, so here, um, what I can do is I, I, can, I can say, oh, I want 12 point font, for example. I um, want my, my font to be a little bigger. You can see it got up a little bit bigger there. Uh, maybe since we're presenting here, I can make it 16 point. Um, let me zoom out a little bit more. I don't, maybe there isn't a, a 16 point uh, uh, parameter. It has certain, certain set presets that work for article. Um, I can also say I want letter paper. Um, so I can do uh, letter paper. Now um, the default often is A11 uh, or E11, whatever the, uh, the um, standard is for Europe, uh, which you know the paper is just a little bit different shape there. Uh, not pattern, paper, letter paper. Can I spell paper? There we go. Uh, it's still squiggly. I wonder why that is. But that's that's correct. Letter, paper. Um, so that'll make this format uh, actually the, the American size. Um, so a lot of times, um, you know, uh, if you try to print um, Dr. Babatunde's uh, uh, LaTeX output, uh, it doesn't match the printer. And so you might get an error like uh, the printer doesn't have any paper like this. Um, and the reason for that is, is because it, it defaults that European shaped paper uh, instead of um, what we use in America, uh, which is called letter, letter paper. Um, but there's, there's other um, things as well. So I'm going to pull up uh, this is the first link in the presentation uh, resources. Uh, this is that book that I said, you know, pretty much all the, the stuff is available for um, LaTeX. Uh, like uh, every, if I want to know how to do something, I, I always Google it and it comes here. Uh, so this is the LaTeX book from Wikibooks. Um, and uh, you can see there's some getting started and there's some basics and stuff um, that you can look at. Um, and uh, installing extra packages, et cetera. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on document structure here, number two, because uh, that kind of talks about what we're focusing on now. Um, and you can see uh, we've got you know, our document class, our begin and end, and it talks a little bit about all that. And then the preamble stuff. Um, so we've got options and then the class that we're picking. Um, and so here you can see uh, different types of options. So we can, we can set it to two-sided. So that would mean if you have pages that are numbered, they could be numbered you know, so that if you print it, uh, they're always on the outside of the book as you flip instead of um, like, um, you know, always on the right or something. Um, and here's some different uh, common document classes. There's more of them, um, but article is the one we're using. Um, IEEE TRAN is for the transactions, uh, a journal, um, papers. Um, there's um, PROC, which is a general one for academic proceedings report, if you're writing a report. Uh, and again, this is for longer reports containing several chapters. Uh, uh, so this might be good for like, um, your senior project, uh, if you want to do that. Uh, a book is for real books. <laughs> let's, let's see what that looks like. Uh, I think book might look cool here. Um, so I'm going to change article to book and save it. 
article to yeah at the top here i just changed this to book oh is that a is that curly brace that is curly brace okay. yeah yeah if i'm going too fast or you have questions definitely uh, chime in um i tend to just get more excited and talk faster and faster <laughs> that's fine better than being bored yeah so you can see now there's a title page with my my name and date on it and then um there's a um a section here that's 0 0.1 uh, that's interesting I think that's because now we have chapters so I, I can add a markup here that says chapter um, and maybe the title of the chapter um, the beginning I'll save that let's see what happens so um, page two is blank oh yeah here's chapter one the beginning and then our first section inside that chapter. Um, okay, so the chapter has to precede the section? It doesn't, um, so it just, uh, 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 so the, the idea would be you'd have sections inside your chapters. Um, uh, and so you could have like a, a section before the chapter, um, but, then, oh. uh, but then it's gonna show up before the chapter, right? It, it, it won't, the section introduction won't be inside the beginning or whatever. Um, so I just switched those around. You can see here's chapter one, the beginning and uh, some code, but up here is the, on the previous page is the um, introduction section. Um, so I'll just, uh, whoops, I'll just cut, move this. We'll have two chapters, uh, the middle. <laughs> um, and maybe, maybe uh, I'll have a bunch more fake words here. Uh, whoops, I meant to do uh, the lipsum. So yeah, so I've got the title of page one and then uh, a blank page for page two. That's probably the table of contents. That's where that would go. Um, and then uh, chapter one, the beginning with an introduction uh, and some pages. Uh, notice that the, the first, uh, the first here's the number for the page. Uh, at the bottom, uh, so this is page three, and then here it is at the top, like a, a book normally would be with the title. Uh, so that's automatically added with this with this document class. And then here's uh, chapter two with it uh, at the bottom, in the middle, and then on the outside again for page six. And uh, let me just let's make this a really long chapter. So I'm going to say, I don't know, ten to ten. So definitely that'll be ten paragraphs, um, or it should be. Maybe, maybe one to 10 would be 10 paragraphs. I should look up with how that command actually works. <laughs> yeah, so you can see here's page six and then here's page seven. So you can see the numbering is on the outside. Um, like if you were to print it, uh, you could flip it like a book. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Okay, I can and see why. So you said that for this, like if people wanted to write books, would you say the learning curve would be worth getting over to, I guess, have the convenience? Yeah, so if I was writing a book, right, I would just, um, all I would have to know is basically, um, you know, chapter, put what the chapter is, section, put whatever the section is, if you have sections in your chapters, and then just type your text, you know, uh, with, with spaces between the paragraphs. Um, so this would be, you know, another paragraph. Um, and uh, this is in chapter one, so you can see um, the first paragraph isn't indented and it's really short. This is the next paragraph, it has a, a little indent. Um, and we could tweak that, we could say, oh, I don't want our paragraphs indented. I want, um, I want you know, them to be uh, just space separated or something. We can, we can modify that kind of um, stuff really easy. Um, before, before we do that though, but I just wanna say you know, um, basic things like um, if you wanna bold something, um, you can say um, text BF, uh, and then whatever you want to bold. So if I want to bold very here, um, that would uh, that would do it. So there's a, a simple syntax for like bold and italics. If I save it here, um, now I don't know if you can see that, but very is bolded. It's embolded. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a, a thing we can do for italics too. And it's the same kind of deal. Text it for italics. Um, so long now it can be italics italicized. Um, and um, everything will automatically be the same font. Uh, it'll have the same kind of layout. Um, and uh, there's, there's no issues there. I wanna go, so now I'm kind of getting into um, this text formatting here. 
Um, so uh, line spacing, that might be something that you're interested in. So um, oftentimes with your type stuff uh, for students, you'll want things to be double spaced, right? Um, so we can include this um, package here called set space. Um, and uh, change it to be uh, double spacing with this command here. Um, so I'm just gonna, in the preamble, I'm gonna add a new, another package called set space. Um, and uh, also in the preamble somewhere, it doesn't really matter as long as it's before uh, the begin document, um, I can do uh, double spacing. And then I'm gonna hit save. Uh, and let's see what happens. Hopefully it double spaces. Yeah, so now everything's double spaced. Um, so this might be something that an author would send to um, to somebody to um, you know have them proofread and then they can mark up in between uh, the things and then when they won't go to publish it they'll get rid of the double spacing uh, or something like um, that. So instead of just like selecting the whole document, they could just take out that one line. Right. And I guess it would be a lot. Right. And okay. yeah. And I forgot to mention. Um, you can parenthesis, anything that starts with a parenthesis is a one line comment. Uh, so there's comments you can add here. So um, uh, I could say, you know, this uh, doubles the spacing in the whole document uh, or something like that. Um, and so this is something that's really handy, has been really handy for me to be able to add comments to my uh, paper that uh, no one can see because <laughs> uh, it compiles to PDF, right? Uh, and so um, I can uh, include a bunch of stuff like, uh, here's what I'm thinking or here's where I got this. I need to reference it later or um, I might, or, or I started writing something. I'm like, I might want to add that later, but it doesn't really belong here. I can just comment it out and then refer back to it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, anywhere you want, you can just have a parenthesis and start writing comments, uh, which is super cool. Um, and, uh, and, and easy to do. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, so there's, there's double spacing. Um, we can also do just double spacing for like a paragraph or, or just for, uh, we can do triple spacing for a particular element of something. Um, so just like with begin and end document, we could say, um, uh, you know, for, for this lipsum section here, or, or maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do another one. So this is just this first paragraph here. So one dash one is going to be one paragraph of lipsum. I'm going to say begin and then, uh, maybe I'll do uh, single. Uh, I can't remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, one half spacing, single spacing. Yeah. Begin uh, single spacing. Whoops. Stop it. And then at the end of that, I'll have an end single spacing. And Oh, okay. Did it work? Did it work for you? It's not working for me. I'm about to try it. So did you check to make sure you didn't misspell anything? Uh, nope. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I guess it's a two parameter thing. So, um, it's, it's, uh, so I, I need to say begin spacing. Okay slightly different syntax. Begin spacing oh, and end Andrew. spacing. And then here's the multiple. Um, so this would be just single spacing is my guess. Yeah. So yeah, I messed up the syntax a little bit. Um, begin spacing one would make it single spaced. Uh, begin spacing three would be triple spaced. Okay. So if you, if you really want to spread out that, that first uh, thing there. <laughs> Also, uh, just like with C++ and a lot of other languages, um, the indentation doesn't matter. Uh, so I usually indent things that are between beginning and end. Um, so I might um, indent all of this if I want to go wild with it, begin document, you know, all the way to end document. I don't really generally do that for document because that means pretty much the whole thing gets indented. Um, but anything that's inside of another begin within that, I usually indent what's what's inside that um, to just um, kind of, um, you know, flesh out um, more, um, you know, get, easily see where things start and end. Um, yeah.
everybody with me? Yeah. Would you, so when you kind of Almost. approach this, would you say, um, do you think it's easier to set up like to put all your content first and then format it to whatever you want, especially if we're starting out or cause I can kind of see how like, you know, if you're a beginner, there's would be a lot of start stop, but yeah. oh, how do I do this? Or would you say just what, kind what of getting I, all... yeah, what I generally do is, uh, I don't even, I don't compile it or I compile it. So I make sure it compiles, but I don't look at what it's producing. Uh, until I'm at a good stopping place and then I say, okay, now that I see what it does, I might want to tweak it just a little bit. Um, so that, that's normally kind of my approach. But if I know something uh, I want in italics because I'm, I'm emphasizing a particular word, I'll go ahead and add that kind of stuff as I go. Um, but I'm not really looking at what it's producing. Uh, and then it's so satisfying to hit build and see like how nice it looks on, <laughs> on the right side. Um, now this, uh, this setup that we're seeing here, uh, you can't really do that. Um, I, I, again, I, this, I'm kind of new to Overleaf, um, but um, I usually uh, just write in a, a text editor and uh, I have like a shortcut that automatically compiles a, a LaTeX document and saves it um, and then pops up in my uh, PDF reader. Um, oh, another cool thing, um, and I think it'll do it on here. Uh, I know it does it on my computer, is I can, um, like for example, I can read through here. And I can say, oh, um, I actually want to change this chapter two title. Um, and I can just double click on it. Yeah, and it jumps down to it over here. So it's very easy to like find in the code, right? Where, uh, where things are that you want to modify. Like, uh, oh, there's a misspelling here. I can tap on that and it'll jump to there. Now, obviously that's right in this command because it's auto-generated. Um, but if I go to um, beginning of chapter one, if I click on, um, more stuff here. So I wrote this. I wrote more stuff at the bottom. Does right, it have a does it have a nap, does it have a spell check built in? Uh, no, but the text editor does, right? Uh, so use a text editor that has a spell checker. Overleaf oh, does. Okay. Uh, so over here, um, you can see spelling errors, uh, but not over here on the generated PDF. Uh, okay. So yeah. So use use whatever text editor you use, uh, like um, Visual Studio Code, maybe uh, that has um, uh, a uh, spell checker plugin or something um, or overleaf, which has it. Um, well, by the way, if you want to compile, uh, let me pull up the command line. So this is the command line uh, deal. And um, here's the command PDF LaTeX to, to compile this demo.txt. Um, if you just like any other Linux type um, style thing, you can type dash dash help and get a list of all the different options you can pass to LaTeX and uh, this sync text, uh, is what provides uh, the output so it can map back. So um, if I, if I uh, have this command uh, here, right? So uh, PDF LaTeX, right, demo. If I add to this, this uh, parameter that's dash sync tech equals one, one meaning on, uh, so zero by default, but one would be on. Um, if I add that and I compile it, uh, it creates um, this new file. So if I type dir, uh, it creates this uh, demo.sync text, and it's a zipped uh, gun zip file. And uh, the uh, PDF editor uh, basically can read this. A PDF reader can read this, and it maps back to your source. So it's like um, debug uh, symbols. You know, it's like compiling in debug mode, uh, where it says, okay, you know, if I break here in the code, uh, it refers back to that place in the, um, in the original source code, uh, even though it's not running the original source code, right? Oh, okay. So where's the point where we run this through GDB and see if we get where our seg faults are coming from? Uh, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we have seg faults in, in LaTeX? <laughs> <laughs> we, we shouldn't have seg faults. I have had things where it's like uh, times out due to, uh, you know, like an infinite loop or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. Um, I've, had, um, I've had situations where um, I've had a paper that has very little text and a lot of figures. And uh, LaTeX will automatically place figures in the most intelligent place. And you can say, you know, I want my fig figures generally at the top or bottom of a page rather than just in the middle of the text. Or I can say, I really want it here between these two paragraphs. And um, anyways, uh, so I had like all these figures um, with statistics, you know, like uh, bar charts and stuff about information, but I hadn't written uh, uh, the stuff to describe them yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
and it couldn't figure out how to place all the figures around the very little text I had. Um, cause it was like, Oh, if I move this figure up to the top, then, then, then this figure can go below it. But then, uh, where will this other figure go around it? And, and so it just kind of like struggled with that. And I had to be more specific on where to place it or, or add more text. Um, but, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, images. I think that's, uh, something that's, uh, kind of useful. Oh, definitely useful uh, and a unique feature. The first time I used LaTeX, I was taking a class in grad school uh, on um, image processing, and uh, we were writing a lot of MATLAB code uh, to uh, do all kinds of manipulation uh, with images. And um, we had to, for every one of our labs, have to write a, a paper that included um, the code we wrote, the input image, you know, if there was one, and the output image uh, that with the manipulation in it. And so um, what I was doing is, um, uh, you know, generating a lot of images uh, through by running my, my MATLAB code. And um, I wanted to be able to have them automatically included in my report. Um, and so I created, um, I did LaTeX and it made it so much easier. I'm gonna create a new folder here for images. Um, you don't have to have like a separate folder for images, but just like source code, you can keep things organized um, however you want. Um, and, and some ways are, um, you know, definitely preferred. But I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna click this upload button here. Uh, maybe I'll jump into images and click this upload button. And uh, I'm just gonna drag an image in. So um, now I've got um, an image called Buck and it's got Bucky in it. <laughs> and uh, this is just a real like low res um, image. And by the way, if I go to, um, if I go to the wiki book um, and I, I go back to the homepage, there's a whole thing on uh, graphics and figures. Um, which importing graphics. So number 14 here um, is uh, kind of the, the basics. Uh, so what we'll do uh, most simply is we'll say, uh, use this package, graphic X. I'll zoom in a little bit. And uh, in main, I'll, I'll add that. Um, graphic X. And then what you can do is have this command here that says include graphics. And uh, let me let me just, that's a, a pretty large example. Let me make it even more simple. So uh, somewhere in the code, uh, maybe in the introductory section here, I'll add an image. So I'm just gonna say include graphics with a slash in front of it, and then curly braces. And then here I'm gonna say the, the name of the file, uh, the image that I wanna include with a relative path. Um, so I'll say images slash uh, oh, look, it filled it in for me, buck.jpg. Um, and that's really the most basic, all you really need. Um, and we can actually even leave out the .jpg, um, and it'll still uh, figure out the, the extension. Uh, what's nice is sometimes you'll have um, multiple versions of the same image, especially if you're doing statistics. So you might uh, have like a, an SVG, a PDF, um, a JPEG of the same image, um, of the same figure. And it'll automatically pick the one that's best uh, if you leave the extension off for uh, the highest quality output. Oh, like uh, resol you mean like resolution wise? Yeah, but, but it's not necessarily resolution. Uh, you can see here it is just added right there uh, in the code. Um, so um, yeah, oftentimes my figures would be PDFs already. Um, because then they're vector graphics. They don't have pixels, right? They just have defined lines and stuff. So you can zoom in. Um, well, here's an example. Um, so I'm going to upload another image. Um, and this one is a PDF. It's the CSU logo. So um, if I click on this, oh, no preview. Well, you'll see it in a moment. Um, I'm going to just include that too. Um, so this is a PDF. This is CSU logo blue underscore gold dot PDF. Um, Obviously, you can use whatever images you want, um, but I'm gonna do uh, that one. And again, you can leave the extension on if you want to. Um, but here it is, um, and I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's not gonna work so well. Um, here, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back to my presentation. I use the same basic logo in my presentation. So um, here on the bottom right, you can see there's the CSU logo. Mm -hmm. check, check this out. So no matter how much I zoom in, um, there's no pixels. Wait. It's a beautiful curve there. Wait, so, okay. So like, 
So in, in the PDF, uh, it's, it's saying this is a, you know, a, a portion of a circle. This shape here is defined with a vector. It's saying, you know, here's the equation for this shape. Um, and so um, there is no, like, it's not like a, a set of on and off pixels. It's, it's like a, a actual description of the shape itself. So the more you zoom in, the more it can draw that with finer precision. Um, just going to throw this out there. This is pretty cool. Ah, great. I'm glad you <laughs> like it. I think it's awesome. I get really excited about, um, so uh, in human computer interaction, right, which is something I focus in a lot on, um, there's, uh, you know, what I really love is uh, being able to program and, and do things very exactly. Uh, and this kind of meets that niche too, but also there's this aesthetic uh, concern, right? Uh, so with user interfaces, you want things to look good uh, as well as work well. And uh, so this kind of meets both of that for me. Uh, the, the LaTeX does. Um, you can do things very exact, very specific, very accurately, uh, but also have it look super good. Um, so anyways, um, you could do that. that that's true with the, with the PDF in, um, in Overleaf as well. I guess what I could do is I could download this. Uh, yeah, let me open this. Um, so here's the, the paper that I just downloaded that we just generated. Um, and here's, uh, uh, come on, there's, uh, there's the figure, Charleston Southern. Um, so you can see uh, here's the JPEG. It's getting pretty pixely, right? But right. again, here's the here's the logo. Um, and you said this was for what file format is that? You this is this graphics? is a PDF. It's a PDF, uh, and yeah, it's a vector graphic that's in the PDF. Um, okay. So there's different things you can include in PDFs. Obviously, this PDF has both. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a vector graphic as opposed to a raster graphic, a raster graphic. Um, so raster graphics are like JPEGs, PNGs. Uh, vector graphics, SVG is a very common one, a scalar vector graphic um, that is used now on the internet a lot. Um, so a lot of logos are done with SVGs. Um, a lot of, you can actually do animations uh, with CSS in SVGs like that uh, we were talking about before the lecture started, uh, the presentation started. So um, so yeah, that's really cool. Um, and, and if you uh, are doing something like, um, uh, have any of you taken probability statistics? Let's see. I know Peter and I have. I don't have you, know about Did you use R? Uh, mm, no, I don't think so. Oh, or, wait, wait. You're talking about the the like the, the language, the programming language? Yeah. Oh, okay, no. That was we had Oh, Dr. okay. <laughs> we had Dr. Greaves. Did we not do a little bit of R in scripting or Oh, yeah, thinking... you probably did. Um, I'm thinking of Ruby and Python. R is not a acronym for anything, is it? It's just R. I thought it was Ruby. It's just R. No. Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, um, I, I don't know why it's called it, R. It's on Dr. Sessions' bookshelf. Uh, that's. I think that's the most uh, I know about it. <laughs> gotcha. Honestly. Is my screen still being shared? Yes. Okay. So um, the R programming language, just a little side, um, is for statistics, and Dr. Greaves uses it. Um, he might not use it for class, um, but it's a statistical computing programming language, and uh, it's used a lot in research. Uh, Dr. Sessions, I'm sure, uses it for her um, uh, research on data quality and um, large data sets and um, analytics and stuff. Um, I use it. Uh, for all my statistical computations. And I am able to create figures, plots, you know, so like different graphs, different charts, and uh, export them to PDF, uh, and then um, be able to include them into a LaTeX document. Maybe I'll show you uh, a little bit of that at the end. I actually use R for my, my. Um, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to show you this. I use it for my uh, um, syllabi, so. Okay. Um, okay. I actually, I use R and Markdown and I generate LaTeX and compile it to PDF. And it's really simple the way I have it set up, but that's, that's the process, which is really, is really cool. And I do that for my uh, lecture notes, not for uh, procedural programming, for, but for my other lecture notes. I, I, someday I'll convert the procedural programming lecture notes probably, but I want those, since multiple teachers teach though at that, I want that the most accessible um, that it can be. Um, but uh, okay, so, so I included these two, uh, graphics. Now they're just there. Uh, there's not a lot going on with them. I can change their size with different parameters. So uh, again, the square brackets here, this is where you put parameters. Um, and so I can say, you know, width of it, you know, equals, um, 
I don't know, maybe four inches. So four I N, uh, you could do CM for centimeters or, or points or pixels. Um, it got big, so it moved to the next page, but you can see now it's really big there. Um, not, not so super high quality there. Um, maybe I'll, I'll leave that at the default, uh, but change my other one, um, to be bigger. The CSU logo should be bigger, right? There we go. So does it do it in percentages as well, or is it just in inches? Good question. So no, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can do, uh, oftentimes you'll see a point PT, like a font points, you know, so you can have it related oh, yeah. to a font size. Um, you can do CM, you can do uh, for centimeters, MM for millimeters, um, pixels. You can do it PX for another number of pixels. Um, and inches. Um, you can't really do percent because that's a comment. Um, but there is, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, there is a command um, called uh, text width. Um, so this is the width of the whatever the text is in right now. So if um, uh, if you're in a one column format like we are, it's the whole the whole page, right? Minus the mi margins, margins, margins. <laughs> um, so I can do a percentage here. So I could say. Uh, uh, 0 0.5 text width that would be half you know 50% right okay um, let me save that and see if that shows up correctly um, well, it's kind of hard to see let me do um, 0.9 so almost the whole width of of the text uh, yeah you can see that that kind of matches up uh, I'm zooming out a little so oftentimes, if you have a huge figure, you probably want it to be, you know, just however big the margins are, but perfectly lined up with the text below it. And so you might say, you know, text width, you know, let it equal text width. Um, and then uh, it'll be as wide as it can be up to the edges with, uh, with the paragraph. Um, now, whoop. Got a little warning here. It's too wide, it says. Uh, uh, so uh, this, this is nice, but uh, in your compiler output, you would see uh, this message here. It says uh, horizontal box, you know, of 17.6 uh, blah, blah points is too wide in the paragraph. So it's not quite fitting at the text width. I think that's weird, but I'll definitely, I'll just make it 0.9 to get rid of that warning, or you could just ignore the warning. Um, <laughs> Always. Yeah, so for my presentation, uh, I would want to pay attention to those warnings because it would actually push the text outside of what you could see on the screen, right? You got too much text at that size to, to fit, so the, the warnings are, are helpful. Um, but yeah, if you know that they're okay, you can ignore them. Um, okay, so another thing that um, I think is really helpful, um, oh, here, here there's some discussion about converting graphics to different formats and what's good um, and different built-in things that come with LaTeX to, to do that. Uh, dealing with transparencies and, and all kinds of things. EPS, that's another uh, format that uh, supports um, vectors. So you'll see that a lot. Um, or PS, PostScript, um, uh, is a, a common one. Uh, I'm gonna go to figures. Um, so normally when we include uh, a graphic in our uh, papers, there'll be a figure, right? Uh, there might be other graphics like in the presentation where you just want to show a logo in this corner or, or your face in the corner or something. Uh, it's not really like a part, but a figure uh, would be something that you might reference or something. And so I'm going to go to 15 here in the book that's just floats, figures, and captions and click on that. And uh, you can see uh, there's some information about, you know, having things float around. I think this is so cool. Um, so uh, you can see here we've got a begin figure and an end figure, and then there's some things about where it's going to be placed here in the square brackets. Um, so I'm going to just put my image in a figure, uh, basically. So I'm going to go um, to, uh, I guess, Bucky. We'll, I'll use Bucky. So I'm going to say begin figure here and then end figure here. And in the middle is my include graphic. And um, I can then put square brackets here um, and I can say, um, I can leave them blank and it'll just default to whatever it thinks best. Where, where should that figure go? Um, and so when I save it, um, you can see it put it, it put it at the bottom of the page uh, by default. Um, and I can add a caption. So inside the figure here, I'll say caption and I'll say, this is the CSU mascot or something. Is that how you spell mascot? Nope. I'm a, oh. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> Spell checker. Um, 
check this out. Figure 1.1, so chapter one, section one, because that's where I am. Uh, this is the CSU mascot. Um, and I can center it. Um, so maybe I want to center the figure with uh, centering. Um, and I'm just putting centering inside the figure begin and end, so it only applies to that. If I wanted to center everything, I could put centering outside of the figure. Uh, but I don't want to like have my paragraphs center align. Uh, but but now my image is. Uh, now if I want if I wanted it to instead of be at the bottom of the page, I could say put a T here. That means I always want it at the top of whatever the page is that's closest to this position. Um, so if I save it now, do 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 do. Um, well, I guess it's not going to put it um, at the beginning of the chapter uh, or above the chapter title. That makes sense. But here it's at the top of the next page. Um, so wherever you put this is not where the image is going to show up necessarily. The figure is going to show up necessarily. It'll automatically put the figure in the smartest place that's closest to this here. Uh, and so if you were referencing this figure somewhere else in the paper, um, you'd want to put the figure uh, this this code here right around where you're referencing it and then it'll find the best place that it for it to be um, around that um, to fit now um, I can also say uh, you know TB so uh, I can put both top and bottom um, and that'll allow it to do either the top or bottom whatever's most convenient and I also can put H so H means right where it is here it's short for here Oh, okay um, so um, that will put it kind of right right in where where the words were um, so you notice uh, this is a long paragraph and then that's where my figure is. And so that's where it put there. Um, but I, I kind of like TB cause then it's like put it at the top of the page or at the bottom of the page. Um, but closest, whatever's closest to wherever our, um, this is, cause that's where I want to refer to it. Um, and then you can put the name of the figure. The nice thing about this also is if I move this to chapter two, for example, Oh, I actually want to talk about Bucky in chapter two. I'm going to scroll down here. Um, I'll put it in chapter two and maybe I'll put some more, um, uh, lip some under it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, so it's not just at the very beginning or end. Well, if I go down to chapter two, where that is, do, 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 chapter two, there's 10 paragraphs here. Uh, here it is right, right in the middle. Um, and notice it's now figure 2.1. So it automatically updates the numbering. Um, and if I had multiple pictures, it would say 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and so forth. And obviously all that's customizable. So you can format everything like you want. You can format um, the, uh, uh, you know, it could say fig instead of figure. You can format the font. You can format the, the size of everything, the alignment. Um, you can do anything you want, or you can just let it do its default. Or you can pick a template uh, that uh, kind of matches what you want. Um, so uh, there's these uh, dot... Uh, style sheets. So ST, uh, I want to say STY is what they are, um, but uh, different style sheets that you can uh, pull that do um, the formatting automatically, or you can write your own style sheet. Um, I kind of wrote my own for my dissertation, <laughs> uh, building off of what we had done to make it fit the Vanderbilt dissertation format. Um, okay. I think a lot of other people used it after I was done, which is nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, so that, that's really, really handy. Um, now, if I had, for example, if I had a, a, a assignment where I'm generating a bunch of figures or images, um, I could just make sure they're, they're put in this image folder, right? And then I can just rebuild my um, LaTeX document and all the new images would be in my new document again. I wouldn't have to like say, okay, change this picture, change this picture. And so that was what I was doing with, um, with the image processing class. Um, I wasn't uh, happy about having to do that, but um, that's what I was having to do without LaTeX, and LaTeX really saved me there. I want to talk a little bit about um, equations and math stuff. Uh, so uh, math people love LaTeX because it, it really makes uh, equations easy, but um, I wish I knew about LaTeX when I was taking chemistry, because uh, I remember I was taking chemistry and it was too slow to write down the notes. We had a teacher that uh, had slides and they wouldn't give us the slides. Oh, um, and wow. so, um, oh, but there was terrible. a lot of great information there. Um, and he, he would go fast through the slides, you know, like talking speed, not super fast, uh, but too fast to write down everything. And I wanted to write down everything. Uh, probably not the best notating uh, method, but I brought my <laughs> laptop to class um, to do that. And I was, uh, you know, 
a little, you know, this was a little back in the day. Uh, so I was the only person with a laptop in class. And uh, once I brought mine, then other people started bringing theirs as well. But it was hard to do things like the arrows or um, things under the arrows and stuff uh, quickly uh, as I was typing. You know, there's a symbol for that. And I was using OneNote, which uh, maybe some of you guys use. Uh, but it would have been so much easier uh, to do math uh, in LaTeX. Uh, with it. So um, under technical text here, there's a section on mathematics and then advanced mathematics and, and all kinds of things, including chemical graphics. Uh, so, so that would have worked well. Algorithms, uh, source code listings, you, so you can do that. So in my, um, in my presentation, um, I had um, some source code listing, right? Like this. Um, that uh, was kind of formatted automatically. I just said, this is source code, and here's kind of the style for the, the source code that I want to pull from. Um, so. Oh, so, so, did, so it was more automatic. You didn't have to manually like make the box and then the text colors and then the- Right, box. so I had to ahead of the time, if, I mean, I could have used the default, but I, I, ahead of time I said, I want the keywords to be blue, you know, and I want uh, the, uh, you know, uh, whatever these are called to be, um, CSU gold. <laughs> so I did specify those things because I wanted to make it match. Um, but I didn't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. But instead, and it, and it automatically it. created the box. It automatically did the line numbering. Right. Um, so yeah, it okay. did, did all that. It automatically grayed out the comment here. Um, yeah. And all I did was say, this is a listing. It's uh it's LaTeX code. You know, I could have choose it, chose a different language and then it, it pulled that out for me. Um, Yep. So that's, yes, that's part of that there. So in math, oftentimes we'll include ASM math or math tools. I usually use ASM math. Um, they both, um, uh, do very similar stuff. Um, but it's a package that, um, remember I said that, uh, um, what's his name? Lamport, um, made LaTeX and, uh, he, uh, made mathematics something easy, uh, and he added macros. So this here is kind of built off that, you know, uh, for making, uh, math work really well, but I'm going to, I got a pretty big document with uh, meaningless text in here. Now, um, I'm going to right here at the introduction here, just, uh, maybe add some math. So what we can do is, uh, we can put a dollar sign, and that enters math mode. So anything between two dollar signs is math mode. Um, and I can, you know, I can write one plus two, obviously. I, I wouldn't need to be in math mode for that. Uh, but it does a really nice, uh, uh, like, font for math. Um, and I can say, you know, x equals one plus two, maybe. Um, and you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see, but it's that fancy math x, uh, italics with a curvy. Um, oh, x equals. In dollar sign. Oh, okay. So here, uh, here you can see it's the, the fancy math X, right? Automatically okay. looks so sharp. Um, one plus two. Um, now, um, the, uh, the, that's easy to do. You could type that, right? Uh, it wouldn't be too hard to type that, but the, where it gets complicated is like where you want to do fractions and exponents and subscripts. Um, so for example, I can say, um, X up arrow two. Well, now that's, uh, X squared. Okay, so score. Oh, so so you don't have to like call a command or something. You just do what you would think. Right. Yeah. What you would think. Yeah. Now some things are are, are a little bit uh, commandy. Like um, uh, so they'll start with a slash. So for example, if I want to do instead of one here, I'm going to replace the one with um, uh, alpha. So I type alpha here, um, and that would actually be the symbol for an, uh, an alpha sign, you know, so um, not, it's kind of like an A, right? Um, I could pick a, uh, what's a, maybe sigma, uh, a Greek letter that, you know, doesn't have a real uh, equivalent, you know, so there, there's sigma um, just right in the text. So I don't have to think, how do I create a sigma, you know, or put an O there instead or something. Um, I just write sigma and it shows me the sigma, uh, the symbol for sigma. I just put a slash in front of it so that way it knows um, that it's a, um, that's the, that's a, a LaTeX macro, right? Okay. Um, so we can also do subscript with the underscore. So this could be Sigma one. Um, if we wanted to write like a complex, uh, subscript, we could put it in curly braces. So subscript, uh, maybe, uh, one plus one, I don't know. I'm just totally making up math here. Um, uh, but you can see now there's a one plus one. That's all subscript. It doesn't show the curly braces. Um, it just, um, just gives it, 
uh, to you. In fact, um, what we might want to do, if I can get my a new tab open, there's uh, all kinds of LaTeX math uh, generators out there online. Um, so post math, that might be good. Yeah, so you can see here, here's a, here's a math generator that generates this, this image down at the bottom. Uh, so this is uh, B plus or minus, you know, the square root of B squared uh, minus 4AC over 2A. Uh, so very common, right? Like basic way of uh, 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 finding, um, what is that, uh, factoring? Or, or, or uh, gosh, my math is bad. I should stop talking. Um, the quadratic formula. Right, the quadratic formula. Thank you. Um, so, but you can see here, uh, we have a fraction. Uh, and so we have the frac command. Um, and let me, let me just write that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a new equation. Uh, oh, let me just show you this also. Um, if you want like an equation to be on its own line uh, because it's long and not in line with the text, you just add $2 signs at the beginning and end. Um, and then it puts it um, on its own centered line. Um, like you'd see a lot, you know, C equation, whatever. And you can add equation numbers and stuff just like we did with the figures. Um, but um, I'm going to add another one. $2 signs just so it's nice and centered. Um, and I'm going to say um, maybe beta equals uh, frac. And so the first part here is going to be the, um, the numerator. And the bottom part is going to be the denominator. So this would be 1 over 2. Um, and you can see it shows up beta equals 1 over 2. I really want to zoom in more. See that? I can say um, maybe uh, one over the square root of two. So I'll do uh, slash square root and put um, the two inside the square root sign. Okay. Nah? Huh? Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's and a it lot easier to yeah. do. Because in Word, you would have to like pull up the math, like uh, uh, the yeah. spreadsheet thing or whatever. And then you'd have to like insert it and then formatting it, at that point I just give up, but. Yeah, and, and, and it's easy to like think, okay, now I want, suppose I want, um, suppose I want a subscript with another subscript. Uh, well, you could easily do that here, right? We could say this, this, uh, this, uh, this is a subscript right here, right? One plus one. Um, so let's say maybe it's one to the X subscript two, I don't know. Um, you can see uh, here, it's a subscript of a subscript. And you could keep doing that. You could have subscripts of subscripts of subscripts. Um, and it just figures it out. Now you could, you could probably do that in Word, but it wouldn't look nearly as good, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, also another thing that Word is doing now, um, if I go to like insert equation. Kind of compare and contrast. <laughs> uh, no, not exactly. Uh, but uh, there is here a thing that says LaTeX now. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So you can actually now, new feature, uh, you can type LaTeX in Word because they realize all their math people are losing, not using Microsoft because equations are so hard. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and that was a huge thing, by the way, uh, for um, uh, Knuth when he was uh, developing tech. Um, uh, equations needed to look good. And publishers at the time were like, oh, math people, well, they can just figure it out, you know, uh, it's not like very many people are buying math books. Um, and so it was really, really like an oversight, but he's like, I've got a hugely successful textbook here. Um, not, not textbook, I keep saying textbook, uh, hugely successful. Um, it's not really even a reference book. It's like a treatise. I, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, but um, on computer science and uh, people want to buy it and it needs to look good and it has a lot of math in it. Uh, and so uh, we need to figure this out. And uh, they worked a lot with him. They actually, uh, they, they, um, uh, they gave him the original uh, print. So back in the time they machine pressed, you know, uh, the first one, and then they kind of photocopied everything after that. Um, and so they had the original machine press like version of his first edition that they gave it to him. And they said, uh, you know, you can, you can use this to generate your fonts on because, you know, we know you really like this. Um, they said there's some people, you know, in Europe that still have one of these old presses, you know, if, if maybe you can uh, get your, your, your stuff uh, worked out there, you know, and he's like, not good enough, not good enough. I'm going to spend, <laughs> I'm gonna spend uh, 11 years writing my own <laughs> uh, way to make this work so that the world's a better place. Uh, 
I was gonna Bro. mention I was gonna mention earlier. I thought it was kind of funny how like how the story started off as like, yeah, this um this person was really annoyed at this, so he went and made his own thing. Because <laughs> isn't, isn't that basically the same story as Git? Yeah. But Linus was like, oh, I think this version control sucks. I'm gonna spend however many years making my own. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, yeah, exactly. I, I would um. I would just encourage you guys uh, to write your next next ethics paper or whatever using LaTeX. Um, so if you don't have any images, um, there's no like specific requirements on, on formatting other than double spaced or, or whatever certain margins, um, it'll look nice. I mean, just the fonts that are available in LaTeX just look better. Um, now I can't say that uh, that's a somewhat subjective, right? Um, right. So, but um, I'm telling you, uh, this is not Times New Roman. Um, this, you know, and there's a ton of fonts that are available, uh, in LaTeX, um, besides this. So you can, you can customize that as well, but they're all built for LaTeX. One of the things that, um, they're hopeful for in LaTeX version three is to be able to include arbitrary fonts. Uh, so you can have all the other fonts that are designed, but, um, there's, you know, hundreds of fonts that are just built for the LaTeX rendering engine, uh, very mathematically and carefully designed, uh, very cool. And they, and they kind of match, you know, uh, the ones that you normally use. So you might not notice like from a distance, but if you look up close and you're comparing the glyphs, you can say, Oh wow, that does look, look at that G, you know, or look, look how, uh, that a has that little curl at the end. Or little, little look how the G curl matches the R curl just a little smaller. Um, there's okay. just there's just a lot of uh, really like fine detail <laughs> into font design, um, and and it's it's pretty impressive um, and uh, really sharp I think. Um, by I default. thought it was I thought it was really interesting the vector graphics part because I knew a little bit I knew enough about vector graphics to know that you know they existed and that graphic design people would like you know um, do stuff with like a it's not Photoshop, it's um, Adobe like Illustrator and things like that. Um, but I know that mostly they'll convert that vector graphic over to something else because it may not be compatible mm. with like Word or it the translation is just completely ugly and it kind of defeats the purpose of like, like they would have to translate it to another format like PNG. Right, basically, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that can be tough. Yeah. In Word, uh, there, there now is support for SVGs. Um, but you know, that's new. That's, uh, like last year new. And, um, before that they didn't support any vector graphics except this, uh, uh, WMF and EMF. Uh, so, uh, WMF is like window windows meta format. Uh, and it's like from windows 3.1 and then EMF oh. is enhanced meta format. And it's like from Windows 95 and it's really bad and really limited <laughs> and doesn't do like, there's no way to do a gradient, for example, um, and uh, uh, super limited. Um, and that's all it's supported. And no one knows about those formats, you know, like uh, it, because I don't think Microsoft's particularly proud about them anymore. And so they finally <laughs> enabled uh, some SVG support. So uh, SVG, scalar vector graphic used a lot on the web. Um, and uh, now can be used in Word documents. But man, uh, LaTeX has been doing this since, you know, the 70s. <laughs> uh, nice. So it's like uh, time, to, time to catch up a little bit. That's one nice thing about LaTeX too, is your documents will always compile. Um, if they compiled once, they'll compile again. You know, even with the updated software, they do maintain backwards compatibility. Um, and so that's something that, you know, you can't necessarily rely on as Word changed formats from doc to docx and uh, it's kind of phased out support for the doc um, format. And, and, you know, you don't, you just can't know being a, a, um, a proprietary company, you know, if, if those file formats are going to be openable in, you know, 10 years or 20 years or 50 years. Right. Um, but this, this has uh, some staying power uh, because it's open source. Um, so you can always like, like get it again. It's not going to like, if the company goes under, you have to save your, your last copy of it or whatever. Um, and also uh, because that's such a, a specific goal of the project. Um, one thing I wanted to try, uh, and it might not work because we're using chapters now, um, but using the ACM document format. So there's all kinds of document formats that aren't, uh, in the standard, uh, like you can make your own document format. And uh, so there, there's one for ACM papers, um, and I think it's uh, ACM marked. Um, so let's just see what happens. Obviously we're not gonna have titles and chapters. Uh, oh, I got some errors. Let's see what those, 
I guess they're just warnings. Maybe I'll ignore them. It's probably saying you can't, uh, uh, you can't like have double spaced. Uh, that's not allowed or something like that. Oh yeah, check this out. So, um, so now uh, it's got my presentation demo title, uh, new font for my name, and then ICM, ACM reference format. Uh, and then here with like the date and uh, a, a DOI, so a document object uh, URL generated for it, you know, some, and then uh, here in kind of a paper format, uh, the different uh, stuff. Let me get rid of that double spacing because I, I do think that might be one part question. of it. Yeah. So for MLA and APA formats and different formats we'd be using for different classes, I'm assuming there are also probably just standard templates for that too as well. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Well, so kind of. Um, yeah, so it's complaining about the chapters. Apparently ACM, yeah, which makes sense. It's not, we're not writing a book here. Uh, so we're not gonna have chapters. We are gonna have sections. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna comment out the chapters. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll make this the middle section. So by the way, um, section um, is like um, the top header, right? In, in Word, and there's a subsection. So that would be like a, a subheading, you know? So you could have subsections and you can have sub subsections. <laughs> and sub sub sections. I don't think you can go below that. Um, after that, there is like a paragraph uh, or you can have like a, a label for the paragraph or something, but you can have subsection, um, uh, small section, I don't know. Uh, I think this is gonna get rid of the warnings that, that we had with the ACM format. Um, so what I wanted to mention, um, ooh, and it's still double spacing part of it because I set the spacing there. Let me, let me get rid of that part two. We're just gonna make it all what, what it wants for this paper format. All single. So state. for the lip sum, could you not just have a one in there or do you have to have one, one dash one? I think so. I think lip sum is like, it's, it's actually uh, like a generator. Wall. It's a, well, it's not just a generator. It like has the same text. Um, so notice lorem durum here, dole. I think that's the beginning of the, the fake book you know, yeah. of, of the language. And so uh, what we're pulling out here is, is basically saying starting at the first paragraph to the first paragraph. Uh, and then here, you know, uh, probably what I should do is say, start at the second paragraph and go to the fifth paragraph of this fake text. Oh, it's kind of like an array. That's yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an array of paragraphs, right? Uh, That's funny. You could say. Um, so yeah, so if I start at two here, I'm actually going to get different different text. It's not going to start with, with lorem ipsum. It's going to start with something else, uh, whatever the next paragraph is, you know? Okay. So, so that's why I think you have to specify the dash. Um, and it's just that, that command specification. If you're interested in any of that, by the way, uh, you can just um, Google. So this is the package, right? Lipsum. Um, so if I, uh, if I Google uh, Lipsum LaTeX package or something, this will go to Ctran or Ctan. Uh, yeah, here's the CTAN package. Uh, so this will contain uh, a readme, uh, the documentation, which is a PDF, and the source code, a link to the source code for this package. So you can see how it generated and how it works. But if I click on the package documentation, um, and I do this all the time for things like, oh, I want, uh, you know, whoops, um, I have a HTTPS everywhere, so I'm trying to be super secure. Passwords and whatnot. Anyways, it's 2020. Trying to get with it. Uh, yeah, so yeah. here, uh, this is uh, this is uh, all written in LaTeX two, which is interesting. So it's last updated here. Here's an abstract. Uh, here's a quick summary of what it does. Um, and so you can say, here's the package, and here's the lipsum command. Uh, here's some examples. You know, uh, usage, blah blah blah. Um, so here, yeah. So it's a paragraph range. Oh, and then you can uh, have a sentence range. So we can specify. You know, I want uh, the second sentence from a paragraph or something. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so you can have a second set of parameters there with another set of square brackets. Um, oh, so there's a documentation the same way we would have with uh, right. something in Linux, like a command. That's, that's funny. <laughs> right, and, uh, and super well detailed, right? Like uh, there's enough documentation here for you to write your own uh, Lipsum thing built off it, you know? Um, and that's true for all the packages. They all have this. Um, and they're all assuming that you might want to uh, contribute and, and update it. Obviously this one probably doesn't change very much, <laughs> uh, but like things like uh, links um, are, are very common. Um, so there's a package 
uh, use package. Um, whoops, not that one. Modern CV compatibility. I don't know what that one is. Um, I want um, hyperref. So this uh, makes uh, links, so you can like have links to outside stuff, um, and you can also cross-reference and cite things. Um, so you know if you're using um, uh, MLA or APA. Um, you can have a citation and you can cite it. Uh, I didn't really prepare this ahead of time. Uh, I'll show you a little bit. Um, there's a thing called BibTech, uh, which is bibliography um, for tech. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a standard way of formatting um, the tech documents. Uh, I'm sure I've got a paper. Let me see. Yeah, okay, so now I don't see the um, the bibtech file. I probably have that somewhere else. Oh, I know where it is. Hang on. Um maybe I do. Oh, I have another one. I can show you the one for a syllabi. Um syllabi. So I actually, you know, I tell you, um, I use LaTeX for my uh, my syllabus, my syllabi, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I have a uh, books bibtech file, uh, textbooks. Here it is. Um, okay, so you, basically, it's really simple. If it's a book, you say at book, and then curly braces, and then here is you make this up. This is whatever you want to name it. It needs to not have spaces in it. It's like a variable name. And then here's all the attributes. Um, so the title, the edition, if there's an edition, the URL where you found it, the language publisher, not all these are required, right? But for, for like citing a source, you'd want to know the publisher, the author, and the year, right? And oh, the title. You said this was citations? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm citing a book here. Um, you can also cite papers. There's a, there's a um, one for at publication. Um, and so that would be like, a, uh, or, or I think it's at article. Um, anyways, this is BibTech format. So um, it's, a, it's a format like that. Now, um, in your paper, so here, here's a research paper I did, um, precise touch interaction.tex. Um, all right, so here's my document class, um, and I, I'm basically saying it's a preprint, so this is before it actually gets published. Um, my citations are author year, so I'm using kind of an APA style, um, and uh, we're actually using, um, this is the, uh, a journal, particular journal, the uh, LSAR, I think it's pronounced journal um, format. Um, it's a journal publisher, not a specific journal, but they, okay. they have their, like, like ACM. Um, Anyways, uh, so I'm using a bunch of packages, including uh, the, the math symbols, um, an array package, the hyperref, so we have those links, um, some subcaptions and stuff. Here's, uh, I, I defined a new command. You can make up your own commands, write your own functions. Um, so this one's called my title. It's just, just basically wherever I put my title, it outputs the title. Oftentimes when I write my papers, I'm not sure what I'm gonna title them, but I wanna reference the title in places, and so I just, have a command that basically, uh, if I ever, uh, I can put my title there and then uh, if I change it here, wherever my title is, you know, it gets updated. Um, uh, anyways, um, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, so here's the beginning of the document. So that's, this is uh, the end of the preamble, right? Um, here's a uh, author, um, my email address and stuff, uh, co-authored with Dr. Adams. Um, here's our abstract, begin abstract and end abstract. I should probably show you what this looks like. Um, but uh, here's the section. So I, I basically said section one, and I gave it a label, right? Uh, and then I say, uh, I'm inputting uh, here another file. So this is like an include. Uh, so I have another section called introduction that is just my, my stuff for, for the introduction. Uh, so it's another file that just gets put there, like a pound include in C++. Anyways, here is site. So I just have site and uh, whatever name I did in the bib tech. So I, I usually name my bid tech things by the first author, like the first important word in the title and then the year. Um, and so uh, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take whatever's in that bib tech file right here. Um, and when I generate the PDF, it's going to, um, it's going to um, put the correct stuff there for MLA or APA or whatever I'm using. Uh, and then at the very end, 
uh, here's my conclusion. Um, and so what's after the conclusion? Um, do, 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 do. An acknowledgement section. Uh, the authors would like to thank these people. Okay, here's bibliography style. So, style. so right here, you could just put um, MLA or APA or whatever. And then um, APA. Um, I'm using this particular journal's format. So again, their, their articles, whatever. It's a Harvard citation format, whatever. Uh, but you could just use MLA or APA there. And then here, this slash bibliography, um, that will generate the whole bibliography with all the right format. And so instead of going to somewhere like EasyBib, like we usually do, you can just do it all in one spot. Right. Now you okay. do have to, um, you do have to take the work of, of creating this bib file, you know, so I don't know if it's super easy, but the nice thing about this is, is this, it, this, I mean, you can put the title anywhere. Like I could take this title and I could put it, uh, comma here down at the bottom, it, all that information is there, you know, and, and not all this information is required, um, but it's there. And um, a lot of places will give you this, uh, just copy and paste it. Like uh, the ACM website actually uh, will give you the BibTeX format um, if you look at a paper there on ACM. And so you can just copy and paste it into your file. Um, I can talk a little bit more uh, if we're interested uh, after this um, about uh, auto generating the bib tech file, which is what I do. I don't usually write it. I just fix mistakes. Um, but uh, that's not too hard to do either. Um, and um, there's some nice tools for that. Um, and then, uh, but my point is I can just easily change that, that one place where um, I specify the bibliography style. Uh, to be whatever, and then it automatically fixes all the citations to be that new style. Uh, I, really just, like, I really liked when you said uh, earlier that we can also kind of have it in our general like programming workflow, the same way we do with Git and the same way that we do with uh, other things like that. I was, yeah, so, so it check it out. Like very programming hat, like uh, a front yeah. line. Yeah, here's my Git ignore file for this, for this paper. Um, let, me, let me just show you. Um, so here, here's, um, I have, I use tortoise git um, with git. Uh, now my right click's not working. Um, one moment, but I have a git ignore file so it doesn't like automatically commit the um, uh, files I don't want committed, like the generated files, the log file from uh, it or the, um, the reference back, the, the debug symbols as it were. Um, I don't have that. Oh man, come on computer. Okay, there it goes. Uh, so I can go to my log here I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Oh, it's just an initial commit, shucks. Uh, there's not a lot here, um, but it's in, It's in. you can see here's my, here's my commit, commit and here's my change log of stuff I added. Let me, um, let me show you a different one. Um, I have my, I know I did a lot of commits for my dissertation, uh, which I also did in LaTeX, of course. Um, all right, so, so here's, here's my um, commit log. Um, and obviously you could view this on GitHub if it was on GitHub. I, I didn't put my uh, source code for my dissertation on GitHub. Uh, but you can see, you know, here's one where I made a few uh, spelling fixes. Uh, I fixed a, a value that was referenced in the text, et cetera. And so here I can see, um, you know, I got rid of a period on that line. Uh, it's not super interesting. Uh, oh, here I, I added two ampersands uh, to fix the alignment of a, of a table. I didn't show you how to do tables, but uh, it's pretty easy to do. Um, there, I added, I changed the word of, uh, you probably can't see this. I'm sorry, it's so small. Um, I can't zoom in in this editor, but I changed oh, the word of to, from here. to from. Okay, good. But you can see I deleted of and I added from, you know. Um, so all of that is stored in, in my Git repository. And, and by the way, you don't have to, um, I, I think a lot of students aren't aware of this, uh, you don't have to use GitHub or anything to have a Git repository. Um, what I'll often do, is uh, here's my, uh, uh, so in this folder, in whatever folder, let's say I'm, I'm creating a new ethics paper. Um, I'll say git init um, ethics paper, maybe ethics dash paper. Um, and then it says initialized empty. So now I've got a folder here uh, so called ethics paper. And uh, inside it, it has the, the um, the dot get file, mm, it's hidden. Um, explorer. Um, I know what I can do. I can do. Um, 
Oh, it should be there. I don't know why I'm not, not seeing it. Did it say there was an error message when I knitted it? Initializing empty repair repository with dot git. Should be there. Anyways, um, you have that folder created. Um, I don't remember the command on Windows to like show hidden files. Um, uh, but it, it's a Git repository and it's, it's not backed up anywhere, right? But it's in, um, it's got the version control. And so anything you commit there uh, gets saved and you don't have to push it to anything. Um, so you can see all your changes um, as you write them, as you commit them. So you're saying you can have a local Git repository. Yes, that um, doesn't have an upstream uh, source. Huh, I didn't, I didn't know that at all. I thought, you know, I mean, okay, that makes, okay, that makes sense. Another thing that you can do uh, with Git, uh, just bonus uh, while we're at it, is um, so uh, before Git allowed GitHub allowed private repositories, I had a lot of stuff that I was like, I really want to have it backed up somewhere. Um, and uh, so I just created a, a folder in my GitHub. I don't know if you can see the, the words don't get bigger, um, but these are all dot .git, folders that end in dot .git. And they're uh, just a headless Git repository in Dropbox. Uh, so for example, uh, here's, a, here's an app. This is a Rails app for um, uh, doing some human machine teaming stuff. Um, and you can see there's not, it's, it's just the Git stuff. It's not really the, the code, it's the track stuff. But I can just take this, you know, so it's C slash user slash Sean Hayes slash, um, you know, whatever, um, slash this Git. I can check this out on my computer locally, uh, clone it with everything in it. So uh, if, I, if I go back here, um, let me get out of this one. I can do git clone and specify a local path. So obviously I'm on Windows, so it's C slash something. But um, what this is going to do is it's going to clone that from my GitHub repository, my Dropbox repository. Oh, OK. So this is, this is in Dropbox, right? It's just another folder in Dropbox. And here I've cloned it to this local place. So now I've got HMT Rails. Um, and you know, if I type dir, you can see it's got some gems and some projects and, and, and uh, template thing, folder and things in it. Uh, this is what's in that repository. And I can make changes here and commit them. And then when I hit git push, it's going to push to my Dropbox folder, which then will sync. Uh, so you can kind of make a little, uh, make a solution like that. Private, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you could do this with Google Drive or whatever, or any folder, you know, uh, a network drive or something. Um, so, uh, or um, you could, you know, if you have your own home network, you could do another computer's, um, you know, address or IP address or whatever. Um, so, oh, uh, Dr. Hayes. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know in a few minutes that I, uh, I have to head out. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just waxing. I was going to say, I got like maybe four minutes till I have to go eat dinner. Yeah, that's fine. But um, like all cool so, stuff. I feel like now when I can procrastinate, it's, it's going to be a little educational. Actually, yeah, and on um, on the lab computers in two hundred three and two hundred eight, uh, if we ever the get tech is installed again, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We will, we will eventually. Um, I think uh, what was it? I have to. I know um, that for my senior project, I have to do a little bit of writing, and uh, I haven't really started on that. I was planning on doing that this week. And I don't know, like I had thought about using LaTeX, but it had been a while since I actually like played around with it. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I would totally do it. And I would, I would grab one of those uh, thesis templates from Overleaf. So it looks like a master's thesis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can be pseudo professional. Yeah, um, or whatever, you know, you, or just use the basic article to start out, but you could easily change it to that later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I like I like how there's a lot of parts of it that are really appealing. It's just that at the time I didn't have the patience to just like to just power through it with any guidance. So right, yeah, I'm, I I wasn't expecting like the topic to go as deep as it did, especially with the history of it, honestly. Um, but then again, I guess when you hear something enough times in computer science, just assume it's big. <laughs> oh, make a uh, class out of this, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's based on <laughs> well, I thought I thought about like requiring one of my classes to write their ethics paper in LaTeX. Um, that be, bonus points. Oh yeah, that could be like extra bonus credit. Points. Yeah, do it. Um, I, I definitely would encourage you uh, later to look at the my uh, uh, main .tex file for the presentation uh, because you'll see you know like a slide is just you know a, a certain section there 
um, in, in the particular format. And it's, um, it's using Beamer uh, as the document class, uh, which is, you know, uh, like a fancy presentation uh, style that's built into LaTeX. So, um, and I, you can see I, I did some customizations at the top with the color and, and whatnot to make it look CSUE, but. Um, I, know, um, I know Peter and I are planning on uh, getting, filling out the Git repository with like this semester and last semester's presentations as much as we can. Um, and I know that uh, Dr. West opened up a, like a, not a repository, but um, a spot for us on the CSU, um, CSCI, uh, the, the, the big Git repo that everyone has. Oh, nice. Um, so the organization. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be filling that out over the next few weeks or so as uh, we're figuring out transitions between this year and uh, next. But yeah, we appreciate yeah. you coming out, Dr. Hayes. Yeah, I'm, uh, grateful. I'm grateful to be able to do it and since everything's canceled, Wednesday, Wednesdays work better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's always nice to be able to have like, especially with uh, Dr. Wes and Dr. Sessions and Dr. Len too with his uh, 3D printing presentation. It's always really cool to see something that you, you guys as professors are interested in, but you know, you can't really talk about it at length because, okay, wait, we have a whole class that I'm, I'm, I'm teaching this class. like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Cause I know Dr. West would have a lot of topics where he's like, yeah, we don't have time to go into that, but you know, look into it into if you want. Um, right. Yeah. And I think this gives a good opportunity for that and hopefully it would be a constant in future ACM. Sure. Yeah. From, from now. Um, I, but, I would definitely like to talk some point uh, a little bit, uh, maybe not this in depth or this long, uh, but just a short talk on um, Markdown and, uh, using that to generate other types of documents like LaTeX documents from Markdown. Um, okay. Because Markdown know... is super easy. I mean, like it, the, no Markdown. It was basically like no syntax. You know, you just kind of write and it all, and it's very inflexible, but you, you were able to write lists and tables and, and images and stuff uh, with pretty much nothing, just pure text. Um, so, yeah. Um, I know that I'm going to be, um, that I have to head out. Yeah. Um, is there, is there any other questions that anybody else has before we disband for the night? No, I'm pretty good. This is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, uh, something I'll add to my list of what I need to learn during the summer <laughs> or what there would be go. interesting to learn. There we go. All right. In that case, I will see you guys next week. Yeah. And thanks right. so rest. much for uh, sticking with me for so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. All right. See you guys. Bye, have a good night. Bye.